So the wedding is over, the newlyweds are happy as can be, and now all my friends want to know what advice I have as mother of the groom. My best tip, suit shop. Suit Shop outfitted all the guys in the wedding with a complete look that fit every groomsman so well. We had so many options of styles and colors and ordering for a group was super easy. And best of all, the cost to own a suit or tux from Suit Shop is less than renting. That's right, why rent when you can buy the suit for less? Our groomsmen were thrilled that they got to keep their suits after the wedding. Proms, college formals, weddings, I highly recommend Suit Shop, and they are giving every listener a free tie with purchase when you use the code GIFMM at checkout at suitshop.com. One of the things I love about Able is how they celebrate women every day. From the women who make their beautiful jewelry or design the luxe leather bags and fashionable clothing, Able provides an opportunity for change. I love this company's mission. Able celebrates the strength, resilience, and beauty of all women and are offering Got It From My Mama listeners 30% off their purchases site-wide when you use the code MAMA30 at ableclothing.com. Celebrate the women in your life with a gift from Able, or just treat yourself. Where you are as you are, Able celebrates you. This episode was so much fun. We recorded it in front of a live audience during the Azalea Festival in Wilmington, North Carolina. And let me tell you, this festival is one to put on your bucket list. It was so much fun, and Wilmington is just a beautiful area. Country music artist Chase Rice grew up in North Carolina, and his mom, Connie, was the perfect guest to have for our live podcast recording. Chase and his brother Casey were in the audience. We had so much fun. We literally laughed, we cried, and we shared the best stories together. A big shout out to Blended, the cutest boutique in Wilmington, who outfitted me for this special day. You have to check out this beautiful store at shopblended.com. Better yet, go in person if you're in the area. But hey, you are going to love meeting Connie, so let's get right to this very special episode. All right, I know that most of you in the room are here because you are a fan of one of at least her three sons. Of course, you know the popularity of Chase's music. I love his story, and it's so different than our family's story where Connor, you know, had a guitar in his hand from the time he was six, and little bitty fellow would tell people, I want to be a songwriter, but Chase didn't pick up the guitar till he was 22. So I really love the way that we're gonna tell his story today because it's pretty cool. But I was thinking last night as I watched Chase Rice on stage that you've experienced something that I have never experienced yet in this early journey with Connor. I have yet to see fans throw bras on stage at my son. It's so special, I can't wait for you to experience that. I mean, honestly, I want to... Really nice, Jennifer. Really nice. (laughs) I'm sorry for your uh, bride-to-be. Yes, yes. We have have to be cautious of that. However, I will say, maybe I just haven't been at the shows where that's happened. Maybe it has. But that's when you know you've hit, you know, stardom. But I mean, seriously, what is that like as a mom? (laughs) As a mom to see the reaction of, you know, this good-looking boy of yours on stage? What do you do with those, Chase? (laughs) That's what I want to know. <laughs> I bet there's like a bin on the bus somewhere that they all go I in. I don't know or... and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best question or the best answer of all. So let's go back a little bit. Mom of three boys. You've got Chad who lives in Orlando. Casey's right here in Wilmington, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, um, Ch- Chase is in Franklin, but a little bit right. everywhere because he's on the road all the time. Tell right. me about the difference in the three boys' personalities growing up. They are all three, I would say, type A, (laughs) Um, very competitive. Everything in life from this little on has been a competition, and so it continues. (laughs) Um, They all have great hearts, and um, they love their mommy. And I know if I call them, the cavalry's coming. How would you say, because I think that a lot of our listeners kind of listen for advice in because they see these good relationships, but how have you been able to kind of maintain that close relationship with your boys through the years? I sort of just let them be them, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, They are all unique and yet different, but there is just a bond there that... um, they have wonderful hearts. They know right from wrong. 
and they know what's important, I think, in life. They, they believe in God. They believe in family. They believe in the United States of America. Amen. Um, they're just good guys, yeah. all of them. Yeah, I can't ask for much of that, or much right. more than that, right? Right, yeah. So two of them kind of took the finance route. Um, are in, in business. Mm -hmm. And then Chase actually studied business in school. Tell me a little bit about the uh, football opportunity he had after high school. Well, he um, got a scholarship to University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill and played and was doing great. And then in your junior year, Chase, he, um, and the very first game, in the first half of the first game, he tore up his ankle, Achilles tendon, and that was it. That was the end of the story for football, really, mm -hmm. which I'm sure for him, you know, as his mom, that hurts, but for him, career-wise, that was his dream, and that just sort of ended because it took a whole year to recuperate, and then you've lost a year, and your mm -hmm. position's taken right, and everything, and so... Um, he just had to move on from there and figure it out and um, decide then what was going to be the next plan. And that just sort of happened, I think. I yeah. don't know that it was a plan for it to happen. But. Right. And when he was a little boy, what would do, what do you remember him maybe saying that he wanted to be or what could you have seen him doing career wise? Oh, I don't know if I ever thought about it. He wanted to do everything that his two older brothers did <laughs> from toddler on. If they were doing push-ups, he wanted to do push-ups. Whatever they were doing, he wanted to do. And, um, and Chase is the baby, right? Chase okay. is the youngest, okay. yeah. Yeah, every other year there was a new rice baby boy at the house. <laughs> no girls, just mommy. <laughs> and then I think that was hard to figure out what he wanted to do after that. Yeah. But, um, he was offered a job at Hendricks Motorsports while he was at Chapel Hill. And so he did that, mm -hmm. which for my husband, that would have been like a dream come true. Are you kidding? Race cars and their shop. The floor is cleaner than any hospital you've ever stayed in. And, but <laughs> so it this was is like car racing, motorsports car in racing, Charlotte, uh -huh. I guess. In is Charlotte, that where that job uh -huh. led him to? Living in a hotel room, basically, right? With another yeah. guy. And, um, his dad had passed away, so that was a huge shock. Mm -hmm. And not having football, I think, was a huge shock. And so it wasn't really what he wanted to be doing, but he was doing it because, you know, you got to do something. So, so um, was he the guy in the midst of, like, the pit crew, like, during the races? A tire like, changer. Oh, uh -huh. wow. Oh, I'm yep, so impressed by those. A tire changer. And Hendrick Motorsports is, like, the number one, yeah. I think, number one NASCAR team. And so he was doing that, but living in a hotel room, and it wasn't his dream, yeah. I don't think, to do that. Yeah. So. It sounded like a cool job, but yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and at the time, I guess he really didn't know what, what right. was, was going to yeah. be next. Yeah. Let's go back to the boys and, and childhood and, and the competitiveness. Who of the three was the most mischievous, would you say? All of the above. Oh. Well, maybe not the <laughs> oldest one. Maybe not Chad. But Casey and Chase, it could be a toss-up depending uh, what day it was. So the two that are here today fall into that category. And then I would say Chase and his buddy Sam, who they grew up in Ormond Beach, Florida. And um, those two together were great potion makers. They liked to mix their potions and do different things, including cleaning their daddy's airplane that was in the hangar at the house with a potion that they made that took the paint off the side of the airplane. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. So their dad was like a hobby pilot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so you guys lived on a lot of property. The boys were actually raised in Ormond Beach near Daytona, uh -huh, right? Is that right. where that is? Okay, so you right. had a lot of property uh -huh. down in Florida. You've got... The he could land the airplane. It was a 10 acre strip of land that was rectangular. Oh, and wow. So we could fly right in and out of there. So the hangar was um, right in front of the house, sort yeah. of. And they just thought they were going to do him a really big favor and clean his airplane for him. Ooh, how did that go over? No, I've heard his dad was quite boo -boo. the disciplinarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only, yeah. Um, only imagine. And then she told a story. How many of you were at the show last night? 
quite a few. Oh, I love that. So she told a story on stage right before about um, one of the most mischievous things he ever did. And this was the family suburban, nice car, but he was um, doing some things in it you were not aware of. He had, I don't know who was even with him, but we had a dirt bike track in the back of the property. This was in North Carolina because then we had moved to Asheville. Yes, yes. And we were living there and um, they were doing dirt bikes and they had a track in the back that had big whoops on it. So we were out for the evening and never knew about it until much later, but they took the Suburban and thought they were gonna do the track, I guess. <laughs> it didn't make it so much over one of the hoop, whoops. Okay. And it just sort of teeter-tottered. <laughs> we never knew about it till, I don't know how you got it off of there, but. <laughs> <laughs> tractor? They used a oh, tractor. They got the tractor. <laughs> oh my! It gets even better. Oh my yeah. goodness! How, when you say you didn't know about it till later, is this like as adults they went back to tell you this story, or how much later? Do you I remember? I don't know when you even told us. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. You, it you was just a recently while learned later. about we that. We had no idea. Oh my goodness! No idea. Any other mischievous good stories? I mean, that's really what we're here for. Although I will tell you that when she talked to Chase beforehand, he said, no stories in middle school, no stories from college. We're like, what can we talk about, right? Those are some of the biggies right there. Yeah. I mean, then there was the night, and he was in middle school, I think, and at 1.30, <laughs> in the morning when you had house phones, the house phone rang, and it was on my side of the bed, so I answered it. It was a girl from middle school, and she wanted to speak <laughs> with him. Of course it was. Yeah, is Chase there? I said, yes, he is, and he's sound asleep, and please don't call here at 1.30 in the morning <laughs> on a school night. There you go. I think I <laughs> Have heard... Have I said anything good yet? <laughs> oh, it's all been good. It's all been good. I think I heard maybe Chase tell a story about shooting himself in the foot with a BB gun. Oh, that was his friend Sam that he spray painted the plane with. Sam was a bad influence. Sam. Yeah. He's a good guy. I don't though. know about Sam. He's a good guy. No, What's that story? Um, it was Thanksgiving Day, and Sam's family was at our house, and... Um, they have five children. The oldest is a girl and four boys after that. And they were at our house playing. And his father is a vascular trauma surgeon, thankfully. Oh, my. Here they come in. And Chase is limping. Sam has shot through the bushes and shot Chase in the ankle. <laughs> and the BBs are in his ankle. So Jim had to drive him to his house across on the beach side and get his little medical kit and remove the BB, and Thanksgiving continued. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't even have to go to the ER, fortunately, no. because Sam's no, dad, thankfully, the yeah. Sam's dad kind of took care of that. Yeah. yeah. Tell me a little bit about your boy's dad, your husband. He passed away. He was too incredibly young, 57 years yeah. old. And I know yeah. he was a huge influence in um, our Chase fan Chase Rice fan listeners in the room know that this last album was dedicated to him. There's a killer picture of him on the cover. Okay. It's just like, it says everything, you know, it's yeah. that photo that yeah. is, is pretty cool. But tell me about the boys' relationship with their dad. Whatever they want, they got. <laughs> <laughs> if I said no, they went to him. He was a pushover and a wonderful guy, larger than life. He knew right from wrong. There were very few rules, but the rules that were there were meant for their safety and because you love them and stuff. But they pretty much had free reign. He sounds like the most interesting guy, too. I mean, you got an airplane in your backyard. You guys scuba dived all over the place. Like, we this did. was a guy into a lot of different hobbies. We did. Yeah. He, um... The hardest thing for him to do was to tell them no, mm. because they were the apple of his eye. Yeah, yeah. And I know that that particular day, he died very unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. He had dealt with um, melanoma, and mm -hmm. you guys had received treatment, had received good news, thought you were yeah, on, on we the did. come up from yeah. all the things that he had been through. Mm -hmm. And um, so this was very unexpected, it was. because he actually passed away from heart attack mm -hmm. after going through, through all right. of that. Take us back to that day that I know was incredibly tough. Well, the funny thing, the blessing in it, I guess, is um, we had gone to the National Cancer Institute on Thursday in Washington, D.C., for him to be scanned and everything, and they 
did all of that, and at the end of the day, they said, your tumor markers are not large enough for you to qualify for one of our clinical trials here at the Institute. So we thought, we sat on the National Mall and we thought, that's really awesome then. It must be really good because, you know, he was doing experimental things um, because they didn't really have a cure for it. And so we thought that was really good. Well, that was on Thursday and we flew home on Friday in our plane. He sits up there and I sit back here and um, he died on Sunday. Wow. So um, it was a heart attack. It was horrible. But he also, I can share honestly, he said, if I'm alive and I'm with my family, I win. If I die and I know I'm going to heaven, I win. Mm. So it was a win-win. And as horrible as it was, I can say now, 15 years later, it was only going to get worse. So it was as good as it could be. Yeah. yeah Y'all so, had a lot of great years together yeah, too. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think I've heard Chase say, you know, got more time in a relationship. The The strength of that relationship was more than what a lot of kids experience in a lifetime with their dad. Right. So what a gift. Right. Yeah. 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 So you had to make the phone call to the boys and you, and you said that after it happened, you just picked up the phone and did it. There wasn't like waiting around. So no, I did. You I just did it. Call. Yeah. You kind of ripped the bandaid off there yeah. that phone call. Tell me about calling um, the boys. Well, I knew I had to call all three of them, and I knew I had to be able to speak when I called them and they answered yeah. the phone. That was a miracle, too. All three of them answered the phone. I, I can't tell you what order I called them in, but I knew I had to speak, and so I just said, I need for you to come home. Your dad died. I think he had a heart attack. I need for you to come home. All three of them were, what? <laughs> so I had to say it again. Um, but there were miracles in that. Um, it was awful, yeah. but it's been good. And there, I know if I say I need you, they're coming. The yeah. Calvary's coming, so they're yeah. good. That's pretty awesome. You said Chase got in the car, brought, didn't pack a thing, just yeah. got got straight he, home. Yeah, yeah. And then he's written very vulnerably about what that experience is. There's, um, I guess you'd call it an essay that's out there that Chase wrote, where he's very vulnerable, called I think Letters to My Younger Self. And I just really admire you for that because it's so real and so vulnerable. And I think that there are a lot of people can relate to the way that that impacted him. And I know mm -hmm. you probably the insight of what that would have been like for you to even read you know, yeah. what he went through, right. through that and the cause of that. So at that time, I'm sure all the boys were, of course, Chase more publicly, but um, loneliness, depression, all of the things of dealing with the news that your dad has passed away. And it's very obvious from what you said that they had an incredible relationship, they you know, did. a really cool yeah. relationship with their dad. So how, how did you as a mom f find the strength to kind of parent them through that, but at the same time, you're going through this really deep loss of, of your husband? That's a hard one to answer. I don't know. We just muddled our way through. Yeah. And um, we had great friends, and um, that mattered. And we just picked up the pieces, and what else are you going to do? Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, you have to just keep going. Right. So that's what we did. So you did, um, yeah. So Chase, his dad gave him a guitar when he was in high school, but it was kind of like just one of those things. He didn't really... Like, oh, I'm going to take lessons. I'm going to be a country music right. star. There was nothing like that. But he had a guitar. Mm -hmm. And then in college, his dad has passed away, but he has a roommate who ended up being pretty impactful in Chase's future. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, he was at Chapel Hill and had the guitar. And um, Ben played the guitar also. So I think he helped teach him. I can't read music. I know nothing about it. So... Um, but I do believe it was his therapy. And writing songs, I think, too, mm -hmm. was therapy. for. Um, and then it just sort of went on from there. I mean... Did you know much about songwriting or even I think nothing. about... I know nothing. No. <laughs> you I still don't, right? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. So you never even thought, like, when he was writing and using it as his therapy, that even that would lead to a career. Right. Yeah. No. One of the things I love that I've, uh, again, read that Chase said, or maybe I heard a podcast or something he was on, but he said, I had no idea I had it in me till after his dad died. Yeah. So it really was that stepping stone toward... I, you know. think, I really do believe it was his therapy, and I know his dad had said to him, well, you can play the guitar, but nobody's going to listen unless you sing. Mm. So. Yeah, that's true. 
That's right? true. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's 22 years old and playing the guitar. But again, he's kind of wandering. I guess that's fair to say, right? He's going to go do Hendrix Motorsports. Not really sure that it's not like that's what he wants to do right. or whatever. So then how many of you remember Chase being on a little television show called Survivor? Yeah, I kind of <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think that Chase is in the list of top 10 steamiest people <laughs> ever on the show Survivor. I mean, that's a badge. That's on your resume, right, Chase? <laughs> yeah, you, you got to put that on the resume. Um, that had to be a pretty cool experience. And again, that came from a friend who knew a friend thing, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, a girl. Wasn't it a girl at Chapel Hill who knew somebody in California and he went for an interview? Yeah. And, and oh, and this is a good story, because he said he went in the room and um, you had on a gator hat, maybe. And she sat down. This is interviewing for Survivor. And there are two girls in there, I think you said. And you sat down and the girl, one girl looked at him, was a FSU Seminole. And she looked at him and said, get out. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> You told me that. Maybe you made it up. I don't know. <laughs> Only so. some of the stories are true in today's yeah. episode. <laughs> well, you may have heard that women over the age of 30 should be using a nightly retinoid. But did you also know that we should be using a vitamin C serum? Well, during the day, it helps to protect your skin from future damage and boosts the efficacy of your sunscreen. Using vitamin C serum at night helps to promote collagen production, which of course we all need. And I've been using the Bareface Liquid Gold Vitamin C Serum morning and night for several months now, and I've noticed such a difference in my skin since I started incorporating it into my routine. I cannot recommend this product enough. I love it. You can get 15% off your purchase when you use the code MAMA15 at barefaced.com. I'm not sure why we didn't think about this sooner, but we have been sprinkling Coat Defense's daily preventative powder on Tucker's dog bed, and both he and his bed stay fresher. We love this daily powder that acts like a dry shampoo and works to eliminate odor and repel dirt. With all the rain we've had this spring, I hate that wet dog smell, and Coat Defense combats odors with a chemical-free formula that prevents the yeast that causes a stinky dog. I think you'll love this powder, and you can try it for 15% off by using code MAMA15 when you check out at CoatDefense.com. One of the things that I love about Able is how they celebrate women every day. From the women who make their beautiful jewelry or design the luxe leather bags and fashionable clothing, Able provides an opportunity for change. I love this company's mission. Able celebrates the strength, resilience, and beauty of all women and are offering Got It From My Mama listeners 30% off their purchases site-wide when you use the code MAMA30. Celebrate the women in your life with a gift from Abel or just treat yourself where you are as you are Abel celebrates you so, oh my goodness I love so, it yeah. do you remember him telling you like mom I'm gonna be on Survivor I said what <laughs> and then I do remember him saying they had to be isolated they weren't allowed to leave their room and no if they cell left phones, their no, room yeah. this was for the interview okay to be on there and um if they ran into anybody and they questioned them what they were doing they were at a teacher's convention or something i think <laughs> said. so yeah then he called and said i'm gonna be on it i was like oh boy here we go <laughs> where i mean i would think that i have a good friend whose daughter was on the bachelor and i just remember her being like oh my goodness please don't do this did you have a little bit of that or were you like oh I why not no, no idea <laughs> and then when he made it and was there and they had the family weekend. Then they called and said, you're going. Do you guys and know where? She had to go to Nicaragua, okay? So it wasn't like, you know, flying to L.A. or something. I can give Survivor a plug because it is real. They yeah. do not give you anything. <laughs> it, the, he was starving. He was like, a, when he came home, I remember you had a camo backpack, and they take him to the last airport, which for us was Atlanta, and they escort him, and then they put him on that last plane, and he said he was walking and had his camo backpack, and he's skinny as a rail, face, you know, hair all over his face and everything, and people were thanking him for his service. <laughs> That is great. <laughs> and he was crazy. All, he said, Mom, can I go to the grocery store today? 
here's the ba- a banana. <laughs> so, so true. It's true. <laughs> so what was your role when they flew you over to Nicaragua? Like, because you were on the show, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you were kind of hinting last night that you feel like you take some credit for helping him win. Oh, I did. We had to play. <laughs> we played a game and they know I love to play games. And he had to run up this ramp and jump in this above ground pool that they built and get a bag and bring it back to me three times. And then when he did that, then I had to open the bags and there were puzzle pieces like for Scrabble or something. I was like, I love to play games. I do. And um, so it said family comes first. And so when you win, which we won, Then you get rewarded, which means you get food, which is huge because they were starving, (laughs) and you got time with your loved ones. But that also is a curse because he won. Then he gets to choose one person to go with him with their loved one, and then a second person to go with them with their loved one. And all the rest of them hate your guts because you didn't pick them. (laughs) And they have to say bye to their loved ones. Wow. But it's for real. It, how they do it is true. <laughs> so he comes in second, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But you still get a really nice cash prize with coming in second. And that paid for him to be able to afford to drop everything, what he was doing at Hendrix Motorsports, and move to Nashville, right. where he had a buddy who, I don't know if you guys know this story, but it happened to be a friend from Little League Soccer named Brian Kelly – who's half, Georgia line. half of Florida He's Georgia Florida line. Part. So he kind of went to hang out with his buddy down in Nashville, right? right? Yeah, pick up the story from there. So he said, I'm quitting my job from Hendrick Motorsports. Okay, great. The best racing team, and I hate my job. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this. So he went there and was moving in with Brian. Somebody moved out, so he was moving in. And, and you and Brian's mom are still friends yeah, today? Yeah, we're having lunch next week. I love that. Um, She's going to book her on the podcast for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he took that money, and they wrote that song, and that saved all of them, I guess. Saved and that song way. is? Cruise. Cruise, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the time, did you even understand like oh, no I had no idea okay the Nashville and the songwriting no, and, no and he idea. said it from stage last night but he was talking about how that song was written in 45 minutes and from the time he got to Nashville you know we call Nashville a 10-year town right it takes you you know at minimum that long to kind of get going and to get noticed and get somebody to cut one of your songs and all the things but Chase was like on a rapid fire you know when he got that in the room song, with those guys yeah. and they wrote that song what do you remember about hearing that song did you hear it like in the demo stage early on or or, like, did you even know that that was about oh, to turn into one of the no. biggest songs of all time? No, I had no idea. Yeah. I don't even remember hearing it for the first time, really, but... Yeah. No clue. What yeah. part of the journey kind of it dawned on you, like, this is a big deal. Like, Chase is kind of a big deal. He is? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I figure, it. I don't know, how many years has it been, honey? 13. And he's still there. Yeah, yeah. Finding his way and paying for things. So I guess, I guess <laughs> he's, he's not a- okay. <laughs> he's not asking mama to put a hundred bucks in the bank no, account. So no, you're like, it's no, all good, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he can put gas in his car. Yeah, and your car. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's the even better go. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you, do you, what have been what you would call? Um, I refer to them as mountaintop moments. Like, what have been some of those for you in seeing the success that he's had? Well, you mentioned it with your son, Connor, when they play the Grand Old Opry. Yeah. And I can't. He did for the first time. He's played it again since. But um, and so I'm standing in the back, not seated. And our family was there and um, we're watching and everything. And I look and in the very front row, there is a seat empty. And so I thought, I'm just going to boogie on down there and sit right there so I can see him. And I did. And then there was, he's told this story, there was an empty seat next to him. And he was like, there's my dad mm. watching him play. So it was awesome. Yeah. It's, it's an accomplishment, I guess. Um, you know. Yeah, it's quite the honor. You're right. Yeah. Good word, honor. Yeah. yeah. And just to stand on that stage and yeah. to be asked to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, so that, that was a special night mm-hmm. for you guys. Do you remember what he played? The dance. 
Oh, yeah. Garth Brooks, the dance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, any yeah. other concerts or special memories from just times like ten, like last night? I was just thinking about how special it had to be for you because you had two of the three boys there, surrounded by friends, family, right. like yeah. that community part of it. Right. And I saw his band. They love you. They were oh, all they like, "Oh, awesome. Mama Connie," yeah, and hugging you awesome. and all the things. So they are so welcoming and. Um, if any of you were there last night, Walker, Casey's um, oldest son, sang a little verse. And then um, Chase played one time at Tortuga, which is in Fort Lauderdale, on the beach, a music festival. And Addie, Chad's little girl, was two and told us she was going to go and sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And we were like, <laughs> sure you are. She did. <laughs> She walked out and sang that at age two, and it, it was her idea. So Walker was so cute last night. Yeah, yeah I yeah. loved it. So now just little Jack will be next one to be on the stage. So how many grandkids are there? Four. Okay, four, from the yeah. eight range in what age? Um, eight, six, four, and eleven months. Oh wow. Okay. Is that how's that stage of life oh, from it's motherhood awesome. to being a grandmother? It's awesome. Yeah. Because you can love them and then you can hand them back. <laughs> <laughs> love, love him and leave him. Tell me about Uncle Chase. He seems to relish in that role. Oh, he's a pushover. <laughs> but he's good with them. I mean, he loves to play with them, but he also doesn't hesitate hesitate to say, no, 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 you're not going to do that. Right. He's, he's very good with them. Casey, would you let Chase babysit your kids? For um, no. <laughs> That's so, not true. He had a 30-minute session over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, um, I, I want to touch on this, but I really want to keep things happy. But again, Chase has been really vulnerable in walking through some, some tough times that relate mainly back to the loss of his dad, which any kid would. I mean, mm -hmm. it's an incredibly difficult situation. But how did you keep him encouraged? Like, how did that had to be really hard for you as a mom to watch your son struggling in those ways? I guess um, lots of prayer mm -hmm. and um, just keeping in touch with them to know what they're doing and, you know, checking in. How are they? And um, I don't have any daughters, but I do have two daughters in law, and I know they talk to their mommies every day. I do not talk to my children every day, but um, I also know that if I need something, I can call them, and I think that they know they could call me as yeah. well, you know, to talk about it. I can't talk to them technically or male-wise like their daddy did, but they know that I love them, and that's the main thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and these moments of getting to see him in concert. Where do right. you like to be during the show? I get this. I question like to a lot. be in the front. I do not like down in the like, pit or seated. No, in in the pit. Okay, really. yeah, that's where I like because, to be. And um, it's funny because I've had friends. Chase knows when I go, I'm not going by myself. There's usually somebody, a girlfriend or somebody who comes with me, and. I've learned that the hard way because everybody likes to say, oh, I was side stage. You can't see anything mm -hmm. and you can't hear anything. Yeah, side so, stage is the worst place to be. Like yeah, I yeah. don't like it. You can't so hear it all. I like to be able to go down in the front. Yeah. What's your favorite Chase Rice song? Not Jack Daniels and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do love that song. But, um, <laughs> That is another funny story because he wrote it and it was on a CD and I had the Bose speaker at home and I listened to the whole CD and it kept coming back to that one and I was literally like this listening to it and I've taken a ride in the devil's Cadillac, I've been so high, I'm never coming back. <laughs> And we had a, an hour-long conversation at 1.30 <laughs> in the morning saying, I'm coming to get you, and we're going to take care of this. So, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so or would you have considered yourself, like, what was your disciplinary style? More of the lecture, the disappointment, the guilt, or, I mean, did you pick up the paddle or the bell? I mean, what, how, how did you discipline? They didn't get paddled very much, but there were serious conversations that we were disappointed, I would say. Mm. Yeah. And that usually worked? Yeah. And sometimes they did get spankings. More yeah. from me than from their dad, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What did it mean when you saw the album cover? The actual um, photo on the album. 
of well, your husband? Well, we had, um, that is his dad in that vest. Yeah. And he, we don't have it anymore, but he had one made. So, and I mean, they look like him. And yeah. that, that it, it was a real The jeans are so him. strong because your yeah. boys look so much alike. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And then, yeah, he would be very dad. proud of them. Yeah. All of them. Oh, I'm sure. Them. Yeah. I know that album yeah. that him, the process of him making that album and then the photo in front and what it meant, yeah. you know, for your family. Yeah. And um, it's pretty cool. I love it. Well, this has been such a fun journey Thank for you. you. And I love um, that you get to be along for the ride. And it's obvious you that you're, too. yeah, I know. It's pretty know. fun. It's obvious your boys are proud of you, though. And to come out here and support you, I just think that's pretty well, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Too. Who has a question that they want to ask? Horus, okay. All right, you, sir, in the very back right. It's it's interesting. You look a lot like Chase Rice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Rice. Mom, who's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> they all three asked that question. And in my con, I live in a condo in Ormond Beach, and I found a little sign. It's long like this, and it says, I'm mom's favorite on there because whoever asked me, they're it. So did, so did you buy three of them? No, I only have one. I only have one favorite. Oh, oh, so you'll never tell though, never. right? Yeah. It yeah. depends on what day it is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Who else? So do you get to hear all the songs before they're released to the public? No, I do not. As a matter of fact, his oldest brother, who is not here, Chad, lives in Orlando. And I was with them in um, Utah a couple weeks ago. And in the car, we were listening to Chase's new album or something that's coming. <laughs> and I texted him and I said, I don't have this. And he goes, you'll get it later. <laughs> But his brother has it. Casey, do you have it? No. Oh, oh, well then, Chad, Chad oh. is his favorite. <laughs> Chase, send your mama those demos. Um, you'll love this one. So I'm in the car the other day, and Leah plays a song I've never heard before. Oh. And I do usually get to hear, you know, not that my opinion matters a lick, but, you know, I'm used to him playing, like, something he's excited about that's new. And Leah had one and played it, and I was like, what's that? Mom, you're not it anymore. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. That's, that's one you got to get used to right yeah. there. All right. Who else wants to know something juicy? I have a juicy. Oh, Chase, popular in Chapel Hill, and then we had a um, football game in Charlotte, and he played on stage in the park, and I was down front with um, the guitar bass player's mom, and I had on my big Carolina t-shirt, and he points and tries to get me to come on stage, and I'm going, which one of these cute girls is he pointing to? And he goes, no, you. And I'm like, I'm old enough to be his mom. And so the lady was like, go, go. So I got to go on stage, oh. and he got to play with my ear, and I was all oh. shaking like I'm doing now, and he says, Angela, Angela. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he said, I don't know what you're doing, but I like it. Oh, <laughs> oh good for you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Fake news. Um, I wasn't planning to do this, but I think I'm going to I'm gonna let Chase and his mom know. I got a message this week. Should I tell this? Where's Kylie? Kylie, do you know what story I'm about to tell? Yeah, so I got a message that said, um, I heard that you are doing a podcast recording with Chase Rice's mom. Well, I think I've been dating Chase Rice oh. for the last few months. Um, and I believe him to be the country music artist, Chase Rice. But when I asked him, he said he knew nothing about his mom being on the podcast. Can you help me figure this out? <laughs> so, be <laughs> being that she had never met Chase and she said they had been dating since December... I um I just kind of, usually I wouldn't even respond but I felt sorry for the girl so I kindly responded and said Chase is aware of our podcast and really excited for his mom. Good answer. <laughs> but here's the kicker to the story. She replied and said, "Oh my goodness, thank you so much for helping me figure this out. It looks like I've been scammed again." <laughs> Isn't that awful? 
<laughs> oh my goodness. So I helped you out there, Chase. So, or if you have a girlfriend you've been dating since December that you know we don't know about, I I'm now friends with her on Facebook. <laughs> so there you go. Connor gets some weird stuff, but I, he's not to your level yet, Chase. So we yeah. Oh man, the catfishing thing—it's like real, isn't it? Yeah. It's One of them was at his door in his house. <gasps> no. Oh, wow. remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. She rang the doorbell at his house. Oh my. Okay, that's and so he weird. Said, I don't know who you are. Yeah. And close yeah. the door quickly. Yeah, and a lot of impersonation stuff, like on social media, which is really sad. But they'll respond really w weird ways of like, thank you so much for being my beautiful fan. Kindly message me here. I'm like, whenever somebody uses the word kindly, uh-uh. It is not. They are not kind. They do not mean that. So, all right. We got time for another question if anybody thought of something while we were chatting. Otherwise, oh, we, uh, you go for it, girl. I mean, how many chances are you going to get? Right? All right. So what's the best and the worst thing about having a famous son? Oh, that's really good. You should sit here. Oh, golly. <laughs> the best thing and the worst thing? <laughs> you get to go to some fun places to see them. Yeah. And you have a pass to get in. That's, <laughs> that's maybe the best. Um, the worst? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't think of anything that's really bad. You're saying getting catfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, him, a girl ringing his doorbell, and yeah, that is that is the worst. Well, this has been so fun, and I know Connie would love to meet you guys, too, and sure. um, I really appreciate y'all coming. It really does mean a lot. Our little baby podcast is growing, and having a live audience brings such a fun energy to these, and you are you're amazing great. for no, um, saying yes. It makes you feel comfortable, because this <laughs> is not in my wheelhouse, either. Oh, you're so fun. I love Thank it. You. So thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Hey, if you have ideas for moms of entertainers who might make great guests, send me an email over on our website. There you can listen to or even watch all of our episodes with just one click. We've got some great ones coming up. So be sure that you are already following the podcast. You've subscribed to our insider email list, all the things. Just visit gotitfrommamamapodcast.com.